Hey everyone, Matt here. So a few months ago I decided I was going to expand my beekeeping hobby and I wanted to teach myself how to make some mead from the honey that we harvest. So I started doing research online, uh, watching YouTube videos, reading forums, listening to podcasts, and I realized that there's a hundred different ways to do it and a hundred different ways to be successful at it. And so this video is just me doing it for my first time and just the way that I decided to do it. I decided that I was going to invest a little bit of money in some, some equipment, um, not only to make it easier for me, but also to make hopefully the product really good and uh, increase the chances of repeating making a good product. So first I want to just go over a basic explanation of what meat is and how it's made. Then we will go over the names of the equipment that we're going to use today. So mead is a fermented alcohol beverage, much like wine, but with wine they use grapes as a sugar source and they add some yeast to it that takes that sugar and converts it into alcohol. So with mead, the sugar source is honey. And you can make just a basic, basic mead. Like today we're going to be making a traditional mead, which has three ingredients. Honey, water, and yeast. You know, and that will make it a tasty beverage. But you can add so many other things to it, so many other ingredients that changes um, not only what it tastes like, but also what it's called. But uh, you can research that online and, and see what they're called. So whatever ingredients you have, when you combine them, it's called a must. And you must put your must into a, a fermenting vessel. And we're going to use this... Uh, three gallon or 11.3 liter uh, carboy as our primary fermenter and we're going to put the must in there and then one of the byproducts of that yeast is co2 and so to let that co2 escape and not build up pressure um, we use what's called an airlock and this is a, a three piece airlock because it's got three pieces and um what you do is you fill this body up with water up to here and then you put the piston on there and basically what it does is when the pressure builds up of CO2 inside the piston will raise up to where these little holes will allow it to bubble out and release that CO2 out into the air but it won't let air which could potentially have other yeasts that could contaminate that batch or give you off flavors or whatever bad stuff back in keeping that must in a, a kind of a sanitary environment so another step that you do to not contaminate that is you sanitize every piece of equipment that's going to come into contact with your must and you can use a bunch of stuff but i use potassium metabisulfite which is is pretty cheap and you just create that um, solution of it and you can reuse it over and over again but um, so you're going to sanitize everything. So from now on, in this video, everything that you see that's going to come into contact with that has been sanitized. Um, so yeah, so then I just have some other little gadgety things that uh, are going to help me along, like a digital thermometer, um, which is handy. And I got a, a Brix refractometer, which measures the sugar content um, in your solution. So if you know the beginning sugar content and you know the end then you can um, you can guesstimate how much alcohol percentage is in there um, so that's handy I also got you know funnel I got this it's like a a stir stick because um, when you have a small um, carboy like this and you put your mixture in there you can just kind of shake it and mix up your honey but with something bigger like this once it gets that big it's kind of heavier so this will just fit inside and it'll stir it up uh, to mix the honey and water um, and also there's another thing that they call degassing and the recipe that I'm following says that in the first seven days I'm supposed to go in and degas um, the must t t twice a day and what degassing is is it's releasing the CO2 that is inside the solution inside the must and that's supposed to help it out um, so I'll be using that uh, two times a day for the first week to uh, degas it. 
So I said earlier that we're going to make a traditional mead. Um, I'm going to try and make a semi-sweet mead uh, according to the recipe. So what I have is I have eight liters of glacial spring water. I have um, three kilograms of our wildflower honey from Verna BC here. Um, I have some D47 yeast, which I'm going to use the whole five gram packet. And then I have some um, yeast nutrient and energizer, which is just going to help that yeast to uh, be as efficient and, and as happy as possible to make hopefully some really good meat. So I'm going to put the honey into a hot water bath just to get it more viscous so it'll pour better. And I'm also going to sanitize all the equipment. So there is a difference between cleaning and sanitizing. All this equipment has been cleaned. Which, which means it's kind of like doing the dishes where you've removed all the visible food particles. But what sanitizing does is it goes one step further and it kills all the um, naturally occurring yeasts. So I'm gonna go and sanitize this. Yeah, and then when we come back, we'll start mixing everything up. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is add some of the water to our carboy there before we put the honey in. So let's just hopefully I don't make a super big mess. So some of this we need to set aside for rinsing things out and about 50 milliliters to rehydrate the yeast in. So I'm just going to go grab the honey now from its bath. Okay. Oh, hopefully this goes well. Uh oh. Oh, this is going to take a long time. Okay, that seems good. Got all that out of there. So now we're going to rehydrate the yeast. So I need to heat some water up for that. And then I'll stir up the must here. So let's go do that. Here's my So, it needs to be 40 degrees Celsius, so let's see what that is. Ooh, way too hot. So we'll just have to wait for it to cool down. So the yeast packet said that it needs to be between 40 and 43 degrees Celsius, and right now it's just hovering up 41. So we're going to put the yeast in there, get that hydrating. We, we need to leave it in for 15 minutes. So let's do that. So we'll just give it a quick stir just to get everything in contact with the water. Okay, we'll just let that sit for the 15 minutes. 
So while we're waiting for that, what we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit out into another container so that we can slowly add it to the yeast here to, um, to temper it, to bring it to the same temperature as the must. We'll just add some to that until this equals 24-ish degrees Celsius. So after the 15 minutes, the yeast is still at 34 degrees Celsius, so I'm going to add some of the must to drop that temperature down. We don't want to make too big of a temperature swing, so we'll just add a little bit and then wait for a couple minutes and add some more. So yeah, now it's 25 degrees Celsius, so it's just off the 23, 24 that it was. So I'm just gonna add some water in this one to rinse it out and then add the nutrients to that. So the recipe called for two teaspoons of the yeast nutrient and one teaspoon of the yeast energizer. And it also talked about staggering the additions of that. So I divide it into uh, four equal parts. And the first part's gonna go in right now. And then the second part is gonna go in in 24 hours. I'm gonna um, degas it, so release all the CO2 with my degassing wand, and then add this. And then the next, the next edition would be at 48, and the next edition at 72. So let's go ahead with that. Let's put that in there. Now I'm gonna pitch the yeast, is what they call it, when you put it in there. Yeah, let's just kinda of put that over there. So, here. And we'll put the rest of the water in here. this off a little bit, some of the yeasties that were on that. Put it in. Yeah. Okay, we'll give it another quick stir. So that should be good and it should have also added a lot of oxygen to the solution there to help with the yeast. So now what we're going to do is we're going to, I need to take a Brix reading to find out what our uh, starting sugar content is. So maybe if I just tilt this on its side. I really only need to put three drops on there. And I have already calibrated this with uh, some distilled water today. Oh. So we'll just put that back in there. Whoop. Okay. So it says that it is. 24, 24 bricks, I guess. So now I just gotta fill the um, airlock with some distilled water, and then uh, we'll be good to go. Okay, so I've got that filled up to the line with the distilled water. So we'll just install this, and then I plan on keeping it downstairs in my uh, cold storage room. This uh, D47, it's got a pretty specific temperature that it 
likes to ferment at and it's between 20 and uh, 16 degrees Celsius. So I'm just gonna keep it down there where right now the, the temperature is actually 19 degrees Celsius. So let's just take that down there. Okay, so a few reasons that I'm going to keep my mead in this cold storage room while it ferments um, is one, because it's always dark in here. Um, two, like I said there, the D47 really likes um, a temperature window of between 16 and 20 degrees Celsius. And right now we're actually sitting at 18.9 in here, which is good. Um, I do have it in this tote here in case it uh, overflows, which I, I, I've read traditionals usually don't do that, but the um, when you add fruit and stuff, they do. But And I also have it isolated from the cold concrete with some inch and a half insulation just so that cold doesn't leach up through and chill it. But yeah, so the, the recipe calls for degassing twice a day for the first seven days. So the next time we come back here will be the second degassing and we'll add our second addition of nutrients. So it's 14 hours after pitching the yeast and you can see we've already had an incident. I wasn't planning on filming this part. I thought that the first degassing wouldn't be that exciting. I came and checked the airlock and there was no bubbles in it and there was hardly any um, agitation on the surface of the musk so I thought there wasn't much CO2 to uh, let out but uh, boy was I wrong because as soon as I hit that trigger and I, I read that you were supposed to you know lightly feather the trigger to start it really slow and I thought I did but I guess maybe I held it for two seconds not even and it shot a geyser of must about <laughs> 12 inches high and anyway so now it's all in the containment bin which is okay um, I did get a little bit on the floor but it looks like I don't know we've probably lost maybe half a gallon or something so there's still I think about two gallons in there um, I did clean and sanitize this bin uh, yesterday but I'm not gonna risk pouring it back in there so I'm gonna clean this all up so I'm finished the cleanup now, and I'm so glad that it was in this containment bin because it did make the cleanup very fast. But unfortunately, I didn't measure it, but I, I think we lost about a liter to two liters of must. So I definitely learned my lesson. But I'm gonna degas it one more time here, and then uh, and then we'll seal it back up. Okay, so we'll come back in 12 hours. Uh, we'll degas it again for the second time. This time, taking my time, I learned my lesson. And uh, we'll add the second edition of the yeast nutrients. So now it's 24 hours after we pitch the yeast. And you can see that we are definitely fermenting now. The uh, airlock is bubbling away. So what we need to do now is I'm going to degas it again, hopefully not make a, a geyser, and then we'll add our um, second edition of the nutrients. So first we'll take this off. So I think that's good. We'll just uh, add the nutrients now. It really only took about 10 minutes. You just have to be really slow in the beginning there, which I should have learned by now, I guess, after two little explosions. So let's, uh, let's add these nutrients here. And then we'll give it one more little stir. So I'm just gonna use the corner of the bag as a funnel. See how well this works. Okay, 
I think that's good. So I just got this cloth that has some um, sanitized solution on it just to wipe live in that. So the reason that we degas before we put the nutrients in is because when you when you put them in there, it uh, I don't think this is the right term, but it makes like a, a nucleation site or whatever, and then it'll foam right away and it'll overflow because it'll it'll those particles will go in there and then it'll make all the CO2 escape at once. So that is why we degas first. But so I'll just put the uh, airlock back in here. So we need to come back and do this two more times, the degassing and then adding the nutrients and the next time is in 24 hours and then another 24 hours after that. And also during the first week we're still going to degas twice a day. So the next mead making video I'm going to do will be when this is done fermenting and we're going to transfer it over or rack it out to another vessel where it'll start its secondary uh, fermentation. So if you like this video, you can uh, thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, and uh, thanks for watching.